Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about how to find limits at infinity and then limits of sequences. To find the limit of a function um, as x approaches positive or negative infinity, um, for rational functions there's th really three rules to follow. And you'll notice that these three rules are the same rules that we talked about when we learned how to find horizontal asymptotes of um, rational functions because that's essentially what a horizontal asymptote is. It's a limit. So here you can see that um, a is the coefficient of the largest degree term of our numerator. n is that degree. b is the coefficient of the term with the largest degree in our denominator. m is um, that degree. So so when we're evaluating um, limits at infinity, we really only care about the terms with the largest degree. Um, the idea is that the other terms are, while this first term is so incredibly large, that the other terms like are kind of insignificant to the overall value. So we really only care about, once again, the terms with the largest degree in the numerator and the denominator. So there's three scenarios. The first case is if the degree in your denominator is larger than the degree in your numerator. If this is the case, just imagine that you're dividing by an increasingly large number, um, so your number is going to approach zero. So if you're taking something, you're dividing it by 700 trillion to some power is going to approach zero. So if the degree on the bottom is larger than the degree on the top, your limit as x approaches infinity is zero. If the degrees are equal, um, it's essentially like they're canceling each other out, and what you have left is the, um, the ratio of their coefficients, a over b, and that's where the limit will be. And if the degree on top is larger than the degree on the bottom, the values for your function are just going to keep getting larger and larger, and therefore a limit does not exist. All right, so let's see if we can evaluate this first limit. Here we have actually two separate terms, so we're going to use one of our properties of limits, and we're actually going to evaluate them separately. You can do this whenever we have a sum or a difference. So we're going to find the limit as x approaches infinity of 4, and then we're going to subtract from that the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 over x squared. So the limit of 4 as x approaches any number is just 4. This is a constant function, so its limit is the value. So this limit is 4. Um, if I evaluate this limit, I notice that the degree in my numerator is larger than the degree in my, or sorry, the degree in my denominator is larger than the degree in my numerator. So this function is going to approach 0. And now I'm going to subtract the two limits. 4 minus 0 is just 4. So that's my overall limit. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. So same idea, um, evaluate the limit separately and then subtract the limit, so you should get negative one. All right, so here, these we should be able to do just by looking at them. These are super quick. So for this first one, compare the degrees. I see that the degree is larger in the denominator, so this limit as x approaches infinity is zero. That's our limit. For this next one, the degrees are the same, so our limit is going to be the ratio of the coefficient, so it's going to be negative 2 thirds. And here, the degree in the numerator is larger than the degree in the denominator, so this limit does not exist. So remember, this, this method, or these three rules, only work when you're evaluating limits at infinity. If I was evaluating the limit as x approaches 0, we cannot just um, ignore all of the other terms, and we can't just use these rules. So remember, it only works as x approaches infinity. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give these three a quick try. Okay, you should end up with 0 degree on the bottom is larger, negative 2, the degrees are the same, so it's the ratio of the coefficients, 2 over negative 1, and does not exist because the degree on top is larger. Okay, so now we're going to be taking the limit of a sequence. So sometimes when you start listing out the terms in a sequence, you'll notice that those terms are going to approach a specific number, and we call that converging to a specific number. So we can find the number that your sequence is converging upon by evaluating the sequence, um, the limit as x approaches infinity of your sequence just as we would a normal function. So I do want to point out that not all sequences converge, they actually diverge. So you know you might have just a simple arithmetic function that will just keep 
increasing or decreasing. Those will never approach a specific number and therefore their limits um, d do not exist. All right, so let's give these a try. The main purpose of this is just realizing that you can evaluate a, the limit of a sequence in the same way that you can evaluate the limit of a function as x approaches um, positive infinity. So here for this first one, we can say the limit as n approaches infinity uh, of a sub n is 2 because our degrees are the same. So it's just the coefficient, the ratio of the coefficient. So the limit of that sequence is 2. For this next problem, the degree on the bottom is larger, so the limit of our sequence is 0. And for this last problem, the degrees are the same, so it's the ratio of the coefficients, 1 over 2. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give these three a try. All right, so here, same idea, we have 1 over 2, here 1 over 3, and here our degree is larger on the bottom, so it's 0. All right, we're going to try one more together. Um, here, if you'll notice that since we're multiplying all the factors together, this is really one large term. So remember, for problems like this, all we care about really are the terms with your largest degrees. So if I look at my numerator, I have n, n, n. I see that my degree is 3. If I look at the degree of the denominator, I see that my degree is 3. So I know that my limit of this sequence is going to be the ratio of the coefficient. So all we need to do is figure out what that first term of our numerator is. So we actually don't even need to multiply everything out. I can find the first term because I know it's going to be 8 times n times n times 2n. It's going to be 16n cubed. And really, we don't even need to figure out the rest of that um, numerator multiplied out. All we need is that uh, the term with the largest degree. And my denominator is this. So the limit of this sequence is just uh, 16 over 6, which is 8 over Three. So you can save yourself some time if you understand how to find the limit um, at infinity. All right, here are your last two to try. Uh, the first one, it's all a single term, so it's pretty straightforward. For the second one, I'm giving you a little hint here. Uh, my hint is to multiply this outside term in and evaluate the two terms, the limits of the two sequences separately. All right, let's check. For the first um, problem, once again, we only care about the terms with the largest degree when we're evaluating at um, infinity. So this top degree will be, or the top term will be 10 n cubed. Then we have 7 n cubed here, same degree, so it's just the ratio of the coefficients. Here, when I distribute in 2 over n, I'm left with 2 minus all of this, which is 4 n squared minus 4 n over 4 n squared. So here, I'm going to evaluate their limits separately and then subtract their limits. This is one of the properties of limits. When you go from here to here, please make sure you show this step. You have to show me that you're taking the limit of this term. So if you just went straight from here to here, mathematically, you know, you're missing some steps. So make sure you show it out and then you can subtract their limits and you should end up with one. All right, that is all for today's lesson. Thank you for watching.